by transcription. Well, my friends, may I introduce Irma Peterson, the girl who thinks Paris Green is a French golf course. No kidding, the other day Irma was baking a loaf of bread and she dropped a whole box of ends into the batter. So I said, Irma, what's the idea? And Irma said, Well, Jane, you know, I always like the hard crust of the bread and this way I'll have a loaf with 36 ends. <laughs> As usual, Irma is mixed up. Everybody knows ends don't loaf on the job. They go right to work. Yes, ends chlorophyll tablets stop triple O. Stop odors of body, stop odors of breath, stop odor of fence. Stop all three, all at the same time. Keep you fresh as a daisy all day, all over. It's amazing, but one or two tiny ends tablets daily are all you need to stop triple O. And now, N, E-N-N-B-S, America's most popular chlorophyll tablets, are proud to present your favorite comedy show created by Cy Howard and starring Marie Wilson as Irma and Kathy Lewis as Jane in... My Friend Irma. <laughs> What's that you're writing? It's a speech I'm going to make to my Cub Scouts. Now, don't talk to me, Jane, because I'm trying to concentrate. Benjamin Franklin was born on January 17. He is the man who invented electricity by flying a kite. Today, we get all our electricity from powerhouses, but the tradition of Benjamin Franklin is still alive. Because if you write to the electric company and tell them you haven't got money to pay the bill they will tell you to go fly a kite. <laughs> Irma, that's enough. Mama's getting a headache. No, Jane, now this is very important. To whom? My Cub Scout. Oh. You know, I'm den mother, and every month I take the boys to the museum and talk about some famous American. Oh, I didn't know that. Well, it wouldn't hurt you to come with us sometime. Last month, I discussed naval heroes. Indeed. Admiral Peary, Admiral Dewey, and the naval hero of the American Revolution, John Charles Thomas. <laughs> you couldn't possibly mean John Paul Jones. Jen, you're confusing me. He's a singer. Oh. Uh, <laughs> now, uh, this Thursday is Benjamin Franklin's anniversary, and... Gee, I wonder who that could be. I don't know. The way you've got things, it could be Paul Revere. <laughs> Come in. Oh, girls, girls, I'm so excited. He's coming. I, I mean, he's here. I mean, oh, it's so wonderful. I'm standing here babbling like an idiot. So what, I've been told the same thing many times. <laughs> out of the blue, out of the blue after all this waiting. Come on, come on, what in the world is it? Oh, well, let me get back to the beginning. As you know, I come from a tribe of gypsies. And as we were crossing Romania... Romania? Oh, yes, that's right next to Massachusetts. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I'm a, it's in Europe. Massachusetts? <laughs> Irma, there's a virus going around. Close your mouth. <laughs> <laughs> that's good girl now. Go ahead, Professor. Well... Now, in this tribe of gypsies, there was a man, you no know, fine man, a brave man. In fact, he once saved my life. And I swore in gypsy blood that if I could, I would repay Laja Soslov and nothing would stop me. And now you have the chance? Yes. The entire tribe was wiped out in the last war. But I learned through friends that the grandson of Laja is in a refugee camp. Nine-year-old boy named Zaurus. And you're bringing him here. That's the news I got, this letter. He's on Ellis Island right now. Ellis Island? Why, that's where Napoleon was imprisoned. <laughs> <laughs> Irma, virus is still around. I'm sorry. Let me see that letter, Professor. Oh, yeah, Jenny. On January 17th, we'll be released unto your custody. Oh, Professor, this is wonderful of you. Wonderful of me? Oh, Janie, my heart is singing to live in a country where I can do this. 
just think that poor little boy, all the way from Warsaw in Europe, living in bombed out cellars in the mud and the rain, without heat, beds, no running water. No... Oh, my goodness, a terrible thought just occurred to me. Why? You'll see my place, you'll want to go back there. <laughs> Don't you worry, Professor. We'll give him a home he'll never forget. Oh, I know I can always count on my two little darlings. No, but here's what bothers me, Janie. The boy doesn't speak a word of English. And besides, I work seven days a week. What kind of father will I make him? Oh, it'll work out, Professor. I'll see that he's registered in school. <laughs> and, and I'll make him a member of our Cub Scouts. When'll he be here? Thursday. Oh, wonderful. I'm taking the boys to the museum. I can teach little Zara's all about American history. Have you told Mrs. O'Reilly about the boy? Oh, that monster. Please, nobody tell her. She's liable to raise the rent on me. Oh, how can you say that? How can I say that? Janie, my rent is $8 a week. Last week, she wanted to charge me 16 Why? Because I had a dizzy spell, and I told her I was seeing double. <laughs> <laughs> well, girl, I got to go now and buy... A little suit for Zara. <laughs> How do you like that? I already feel like a father. Oh, well, it's only natural. When Al gave me that little pet monkey, I felt just like a mother. <laughs> now, Cub Scouts, today we're going to the museum. Uh, have you given all the boys their instructions? Yes, Madam Dinmother. I'll get it. Well, here he is, girl. Ah, oh, he's so cute. <laughs> Zaris, Pezzy Fiddish, Jane Stacy. Chubby. <laughs> he says he's very glad to know you. Ah. <laughs> and Zaris, Pezzy Fiddish, Ermer Peterson. Umja hazish, pizza, chupunya. Well, what did he say? He said if the Tower of Pisa had legs like yours, it wouldn't lean so much. <laughs> He said that? Uh, once a gypsy, always a gypsy. Hey, <laughs> <laughs> my, my darling, will you take good care of him? I have to go to work now. Zaurus, deja vigi kal nachi until I go be. What did you tell him? Oh, I, I told him, when he's hungry, to open his mouth. When he wants to be excused, raise his hand. <laughs> oh, I'll remember that. And I'll get it straight. When he raises his hand, don't show him to the kitchen. <laughs> Unja, Zaris. Unja, Papa. And now, children, let's get ready to go to the museum. Oh, then, Mother. Yes, Jimmy? I told my Daddy all the things you taught us on our last trip. Oh, really? Well, what did he say? He said before we start out, I should smell your breath. <laughs> <laughs> He's just kidding. Besides, I use ends. And now, if you'll take Zaris' hand and... Come in. Where is he? Where is that moth-eaten derelict? Mrs. O'Reilly, what's wrong? He's leaving me those insulting poems again. Listen to this. To Mrs. O'Reilly, your hair is as red as a ball of fire, and your figure is lovely, of course. I can get you a job as a gas station model to pose for the sign of the flying red horse. <laughs> Oh, the first excuse I get, I'm going to throw that bum out of here. Oh, who's this little fella? Oh, he's the professor. Irma, uh, uh, Mrs. O'Reilly, he, he, he's just one of the Cub Scouts. Oh, indeed. Uh. Hello, little boy. What's your name? He doesn't speak English. Why not? Uh, he's an Indian Scout. Oh. <laughs> well, I'm going to find that professor and tell him off if it's the last thing I do. See you later, girls. Oh, now, this is just great. Irma, you better get these kids down to the museum. I'm going to go over to the tea room and warn the professor. If she finds out about the boy, she'll throw them both out. All right. Uh, come on, Cubs. Oh, dear. What's the matter? Zaris is pointing to his mouth. I guess he wants to be excused. <laughs> Now, watch your step. Oh, here we are. Now, as you know, today is Benjamin Franklin's birthday. 
I brought you to this museum so we can learn about the great American leaders, so Zorus can see what a wonderful country he now lives in. Now, in this glass case, we see a mummy. Why is he all bandaged up like that? Oh, he probably died in an accident. <laughs> uh, now, uh, underneath him is this sign, 800 B.C. What does B.C. mean? Well, I'm not sure whether that stands for bushels or quartz. <laughs> Papa! Papa! Oh, he wants to go home. That's the only word he knows. He misses the professor. Now, let's see. Um, How do we get out of here? Oh, there's a sign to the... I-N-C-I-N-E-R-A-T-O-R. -E oh, to the escalator. <laughs> uh, all right, children, now follow me. You don't have to knock on my door. Just blow, it will fall down. <laughs> What can? Oh, oh, the mailman. There's a special delivery for you. Oh, thank you. What could this be? Yeah. Professor Kropotkin, this will inform you. <gasps> oh, no. Oh, no, my goodness. Oh, where is she? Where is she? Professor, uh, I looked for you at the tea room. I couldn't find oh, you. Oh, Janie, this is terrible. Look. What is it? No, it's from the immigration authorities. They are coming in one hour to check to see what kind of home life Zoros has. Well, so what? Well, you know they never let you keep a child unless you can show that he's been given a normal good home. And I'm afraid they'll take Zorus away from me. <laughs> oh, don't let them do it, Janie. Don't oh, let them do Professor, it. Oh, Professor, why would they do well, that? Well, I was so eager to get Zorus. I told the immigration people, well, I told them something that wasn't the truth. Well, after all, what's a pretty little white lie? Yeah, well, this one isn't pretty and it isn't little. <laughs> It's big and horrible. What do you mean? I just remembered. I told them I was married to Mrs. O'Reilly. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. Here's a man with triple O. Let's listen as he asks his druggist what to do. Can you give me really effective protection against triple O? Odors of breath, odors of body, and odor of fence? I've never found any old-fashioned deodorant that could take care of all three. Yes, ENDS chlorophyll tablets stop all three at the same time. Stop triple O. It's the new safe and pleasant way to stay fresh as a daisy all over, all day long. But how about these cheaper chewing gum or candy products? They contain chlorophyll, too. But look at any of them. Nowhere does the label state how much chlorophyll it contains. Why, you're right. Now, look at the ENDS label. It states very clearly that ENDS contain 100 milligrams of Daritol chlorophyll, a fully effective dose. That's why only one or two tiny ENDS tablets a day stop triple O. Stop all three odor offenses all day long. But don't expect such long-lasting results from cheaper chewing gum or candy substitutes that contain so little chlorophyll. Ends are so effective because they start acting instantly inside the body where odors begin. So for pennies a day, you get Ends longer-lasting protection. They're pleasant-tasting, safe, too. Safe as any garden vegetable. Get E-N-N-D-S. Ends chlorophyll tablets, and be sure you stop triple O. Trial size only 49 cents at drug counters everywhere. Larger sizes even more economical. And now back to my friend Irma. Professor, don't sit there like that with your head in your hands. After all, you're not going to the electric chair. Janie, you told me the only solution is to marry Mrs. O'Reilly. And to me, this is like the electric chair. Either one could shock a man to death. <laughs> yeah, but you got into this situation yourself. Why did you tell the immigration authorities you were married to her? So I could get the boy. Who would figure they would check out? Janie, they'll be here in an hour. Think fast. Oh, well, Jane, back already? Yes, I dropped off the other children. Oh, Professor, here's your little boy. Papa. 
Professor, why are you crying? The professor's in trouble. He told the immigration authorities he was married to Mrs. O'Reilly, and they're coming in an hour to check. Well, Professor, there's still time for you to marry her. Everyone with the same terrible advice. I'm like a horse that is sick, and every veterinarian that comes in says, Shoot him. <laughs> likes you, and there are many ways to win a woman's heart. I don't want to win her heart, because then I'll have to take the rest of her, and this is too much for any man. <laughs> it, wouldn't, it wouldn't be fair to her that I should ask to marry me because of an emergency. This is like inviting a plumber to dinner because the stove is broke. <laughs> well, that's your final decision? Yes. I will not marry Mrs. O'Reilly out of convenience. And if they take that boy away, I will follow him wherever they send him. This is my solemn pledge. Well, Jean, what do you think's going to happen? Oh, honey, I don't know. The authorities may send the boy back to Romania, and I guess the professor will follow him. Oh, I've got enough without you. But the professor's too old to go to Romania. I saw Quo Vadis. All those Romans walk around in sheets. He'll catch pneumonia. <laughs> I wish I could catch something. Maybe a fast train. Come in. Hi, you chicken. Oh, well. Oh, my. Hi. Well, chicken, what's wrong? Haven't seen you look so sad since you found out what I paid for your Christmas present. <laughs> Al, I'll give it to you quickly. In order to get custody of a child, the professor told the authorities he was married to Mrs. O'Reilly, and they're coming here to check. Oh, well, that's very simple. All we do is get somebody to pose as Mrs. O'Malley. Now, Mushy here is great when he gets dressed as a dame. <laughs> yeah, sure, he fools everybody. You should have seen him at the Teamsters Masquerade. Yeah, I got four proposals from fellas. <laughs> <laughs> Mushy, Mushy, do you think you could dream up something that would look like Mrs. O'Reilly's hair? Well, I could put a tomato on my head and pump it up until it explodes. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds great. Girls, got to admit we come up with things fast. We're right on the ball. Oh, I'll say you're right on the ball. It's only a matter of time till they put a chain on it so it doesn't get too far from your leg. <laughs> now, just a minute, you. You can't say them things to my best friend. You talking to me? Yeah. You got one of the biggest mouths I ever heard. <laughs> That's the reason I have never asked you for no date. So that's the reason. Yeah. I must remember to have it stretched. <laughs> oh, don't get high hat with me. You're no better than none of the others. Underneath the door, all you dames, you all alike. Yeah, take off your skin and nobody would go out with you. <laughs> Wait a minute, children. Maybe a lawyer can help the professor. I want to see my boss, Mr. Clyde. Irma, if you insist on meddling, may I suggest you employ discretion, tact, and astuteness? No, I hate these law firms with big names. I want to use Mr. Clyde. <laughs> Irma Peterson. Come in, won't you? Well, thank you, Mrs. Clyde. Uh, may I see Mr. Clyde? Well, he's indisposed, but he can see you. Uh, just don't tell him anything depressing. You know how he is. The moment he gets a headache, he thinks he's passing away. Oh, uh, men are such babies. Uh, where is he? Uh, through that door down the hall. Thank you. Huh. My, these carpets are wonderful to walk on. <laughs> well, they have high piles. Oh, I understand. We sweep under ours, too. <laughs> Come in. Oh, Mr. Clyde, you're in bed. What's wrong? I don't feel well. They tell me it's a mild case of glopitis. Oh, is that what you have? Well, it's nothing to worry about. Just stay awake. Stay awake? All the people I know who had it died in their sleep. <laughs> Peterson, aside from being a cheerleader, what else brings you here? <laughs> Mr. Clyde, do you have any influence with the immigration office? Yes, but it can't help me. You're an American. I can't have you deported. <laughs> no, it's not about 
about me. You see, the professor adopted a little boy, and he said he was married to Mrs. O'Reilly. Well, he perjured himself. There's nothing I can do about it. But aren't you even going to try? Well, there's nothing to be done. Now, will you please go? All right. If that's your last word, goodbye. If you don't mind, Miss Peterson, will you put down my hot water bottle? Oh, oh I'm sorry. I thought I came in with a red bag. <laughs> Mrs. O'Reilly, this is an act of mercy. The professor is up in his room crying his eyes out. He loves this little boy. Oh, you can't let him down. But, Jeannie, he had no business saying I was married. It hurts a girl. It's like a store putting up a sign, going out of business. <laughs> but can't you just pretend? No. If the man had ever said a decent thing about me, it might be different. But, you know, you just can't love a man who keeps comparing your figure with 500 pounds of knuckworth. <laughs> well, you know he's kidding. Look, the immigration inspector will be here in a few minutes. Just, just do it this one time. Well, I doubt it, Janie. Uh, hello, Jane. I've had no luck with Mr. Clyde. How about here? Ceiling zero. You can say that again. The professor thought he could twist me around his little finger. Oh, that's not true. He often told me he couldn't lift you with a ten-ton truck. Irma. <laughs> All right, Mrs. O'Reilly, if that's your decision. Right now it is. Well, I'm going down to freshen up. I've got to get a new kind of glue for the eyelashes. Every time I wink at a fella, I can't see him for the rest of the night. <laughs> what are we going to do, Jane? I don't know, sweetie. I think it's too late to do anything now. I'll see who it is. Hello, girls. Come in, Jarvis. Oh, Professor, your eyes are red. Girls, I know there is no hope, but can I please say that this is my room when the inspector comes? Of course you can, Professor. You should have seen Jarvis when he first saw my room. What did he say? I'll get him to repeat. Zara, Tati Porja did the room. Bocho, locho. Bocho, locho? Yeah, this means, what a horrible mess. Oh. <laughs> we gypsies say bocho, locho when we pass a dump or an overturned trash can. Girls, I left my bag in here. Oh, it's you, Professor, and this Indian scout. All right, I was trying to fool you. But I want you to meet Zoros before... Before they take him away from me. Zoros, Casey lady. Ask him what he thinks of me. All right. Doris. Tati Poja, Mrs. O'Reilly. Pocho, Pocho. <laughs> she says you have, you have magnificent red hair and gorgeous figure. But the overturned ash can. Uh, 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 <laughs> Irma, there's a drip in the sink. Will you join us? <laughs> little fella likes me red hair and me lovely figure. Well, isn't that nice? Oh, gosh. Oh, that must be him. They don't fight what must be. Let him in. Oh. I'm from the immigration office. Oh, hello, Professor. Are you his wife? Well, I... I'm his wife. Welcome to our home. Today's our anniversary. Come here, hubby dear, and give me a great big kiss. <laughs> Cambridge, just shake hands. <laughs> Don't be bashful. Oh, Inspector, we're making a fine home for Zorus on this, our 10th anniversary. Come here, hubby. I'm going to kiss you for every year. <laughs> well, this is what we like to find. You can count on a favorable report. Goodbye. For goodness sake, Miss O'Reilly, stop the kissing. He went, he went already. <laughs> Listen, did you want me to act as your wife? Yes. Well, don't tell me how to play me part. <laughs> Here's another kiss. Oh, Bojo Lojo. <laughs> Irma and Jane will be back in a moment. But first, can't anything be done about triple O? Triple O. 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 Triple O.
Yes, here's amazing news about a scientific odor test. Eight out of ten men and women stopped or definitely reduced triple O. Stopped odor of body. Stopped odor of breath. Stopped offending. Executives, secretaries, clerks, even factory workers at 110 degree heat took ENDS chlorophyll tablets. Results from hundreds and hundreds of examinations were astounding. Working inside the body where odors begin, ENDS actually prevented unpleasing odors from forming. Stop triple O. Stop all three odor offenses. Yes, there's scientific proof that ENDS really stop triple O. Keep you fresh as a daisy all over, all day long. You get more complete, more lasting protection against triple O than from any old-fashioned body deodorant, toothpaste, soap, mouthwash. And ENDS are so easy to use. Safe, safe as any green vegetable. Pleasant tasting. ENDS contain 100 milligrams, a fully effective dose of Daritol chlorophyll. So beware of cheaper chewing gum or candy substitutes that contain so little chlorophyll or that fail to state their chlorophyll content on the label. Insist on ENDS chlorophyll tablets. That's ENDS, E-N-N-D-S. Trial size only 49 cents, larger sizes, even more economical. Stop triple O with ENDS. Little Zorus is in a private boarding school out of town, and there never was a happier man than the professor. We're all happy. I'm happy. Mrs. O'Reilly is happy. She should be. First time she's been kissed since her mother presented her to President McKinley. (laughs) Irma is happy. Oh, you bet I am. You know why? You tell them, Fort Pearson. Friends, we wish to announce that in answer to my friend Irma's offer last week to work as secretary for a day for the highest bidder to the March of Dimes, Irma's friends have been responding in gratifying numbers. At the present time, there exists a tie for the highest bid. Mr. Harry H. Caswell of Springfield, Massachusetts, Mr. John C. Edgar of Los Angeles, California, and Station WIBV of Belleville, Illinois, have each offered a bid of $1,000 for Irma's secretarial services. But folks, don't forget, my friend Irma's offer is still on. For the person who submits the highest bid to the current March of Dimes anti-polio fund, Your friend Irma, in the person of lovely Marie Wilson, will work as secretary for a day. That's right. My friend Irma, Marie Wilson, will fly to your hometown to work in your office as your secretary if you're the highest bidder to the March of Dimes. So send in your bid. Remember, that's only your bid. Do not send any money. But don't delay. Write or wire your bid to the March of Dimes to my friend Irma, CBS Radio Hollywood, California, today. Perhaps you will have the opportunity to be Irma's boss for a day. And at the same time, you will be contributing to the fight against the dread disease of infantile paralysis. My Friend Irma is a Cy Howard production and is directed by Park Levy, who writes the script with Stanley Adams. Pat Burton is associate producer. Marie Wilson is starred as Irma and Kathy Lewis as Jane. The part of Al was played by John Brown. Hans Conrad was heard as Professor Kropotkin. Gloria Gordon as Mrs. O'Reilly, and Alan Reed as Mr. Clyde. Music was under the direction of Lud Gluskin. Tired-looking eyes can ruin your appearance, make you look unattractive, dull, so don't take chances. When eyes are red, weary from lack of sleep, glare, driving, get eye gene. Two soothing drops in each eye float away that tired eye feeling at once. Eye gene is like a prescription, contains Lexitol, acts as a tonic for the eyes. Safe, gentle, too. Get Hygiene, E-Y-E-G-E-N-E, tonight. Use it daily for bright, attractive eyes. Trial size only 25 cents, larger sizes even more economical. Hygiene at drug counters everywhere. Be with us next Sunday at this time when ENDS, America's most popular chlorophyll tablets, again bring you My Friend Irma. Paul Caruso speaking. Now stay tuned for Armist Brooks starring Eve Arden, which follows immediately on most of these CBS stations. My Friend Irma was transcribed. This is the CBS Radio Network.